Hey there, my friend, welcome. My name is Dr. Anthony Balduzzi. I'm the founder here at the Fit Father Project. In today's video, we're gonna talk about seven principles of gaining muscle fast. Um, and this is a really important topic if you're a guy out there, um, whether you're in your 40s and 50s, like a lot of guys we help here at the FFP, or you're a younger guy in your 20s and 30s, you wanna gain muscle, these are the seven principles, no matter what workout program you're to buy or try, that it needs to follow these rules. So we're gonna cover these in this video, um, and I know you're gonna learn a ton, and first off, the reason I'm so passionate about this topic is because growing up, muscle building was a huge topic for me. Um, I started working out when I was around 10, after my dad passed away, um, and I wanted to become as strong as I possibly could, and really just so that I can have a body that wouldn't get sick like dad's body, um, and eventually I became a national champion bodybuilder over doing this kind of stuff over 10 years. So I've had a long career in doing bodybuilding and training, so I know these principles firsthand work, but more importantly, our team here at the FFP, we've used these on tens of thousands of guys with our online programs to produce amazing muscle building results. So you're gonna get the benefit of that and you're gonna learn a ton in this video. So get out a pen and paper, you're gonna to wanna to take some notes and let's dive on in. All right, so to get straight into it, the first thing we need to talk about is your training. How are you lifting weights? How frequently, how much, and what kind of general recommendations can we make regardless of what program you're following? Well, the first thing is we know how muscles grow. Muscles grow by getting stressed meaning we work them out and we uh, exert a stress on the muscle, and then there's something called supercompensation that happens, where the muscle goes stronger than that stress, it recovers, and it gets a little bit better. And so to continue building muscle, we need to lift heavier weights. We need to lift 50 pounds, and then we need to try to do the 55s, the 60s, et cetera. This is called progressive overload training. Um, and I wanna give this principle as opposed to saying that you should be doing full body workouts, so you need to do a bro split, or you need to be doing upper lower split. This is the key principle. We need to make sure you're getting progressive resistance as often as possible. And there are a lot of different recommendations that I have. Um, the first thing is we want to base our workouts on compound movements. So if your goal is to build muscle fast, then really your goal in simple terms should be to get strong fast on the squat, the deadlift, your pull-ups, your overhead presses, and your rows. Some of these foundational movements, if you get strong, focus on getting stronger, progressive resistance on those motions, you're gonna be very successful. Now, when it comes to picking your right training plan, which is hugely essential, we need to balance a couple things. We need to balance that stimulus we wanna create with recovery where the muscles actually grow outside the gym. So the workout stimulates that protein synthesis response. Muscles start to grow, they get that stimulus, and outside the gym, we feed the muscles with the nutrition, with the sleep, so they recover and get better. So we need to balance these two factors. So yes, we can train way too frequently with not enough recovery. And so I need you to think right now, what is your life look like? How much of a recovery capacity do you have? If you're a kid in college and you basically have no responsibility other than going to classes and drinking or whatever the hell you do, um, then you have more time to sleep and recover. So you can probably train a little more aggressively than someone maybe who's working 50, 60, 70 hours a week at a job and is barely getting six hours of sleep, your recovery capacity is a lot different. So know your recovery capacity and tailor your training to that. As a good rule of thumb though, as a natural guy, you wanna be training twice, each body part at least twice per week. So I like a slightly higher frequency approach. Why? Well, because for every set that you do of any given body part, let's say we're doing the bench press, there is diminishing returns to each subsequent set. So I'll, I'll tease that phrase out for you. So let's say you do three to four sets on the bench press. Those three to four sets, those first ones, very effective for stimulating the chest, breaking those, the, down those muscle fibers, stimulating the protein synthesis. Sets six through 10 have marginal decreasing benefit. So your first three sets very effective, the next ones are not nearly as effective for stimulating that protein synthesis. There's a sweet spot to the amount of volume you can do in any given workout. So this is why I like the two times per week hit every body part um, method because after you train a particular muscle, you're gonna get this stimulation protein synthesis effect for, you know, depends on your training age, but maybe up to 48 hours after a workout. So it makes more sense to do um, X number of sets, let's say five to six for a particular body part on Monday, and then train it again on Friday versus doing 20 sets of chest on Monday and being so ungodly sore that you can't train chest again for another seven days. 
does not make as much sense. Now, this is what works for natural guys. If you're not natural and you have a recovery capacity, you're probably not watching this video um, first off, but second off, you can handle a lot more volume and your chest can actually recover from that kind of beating. But for natural guys, split up your volume. So if you're gonna be doing 12 sets of chest throughout the week, do six on day one, six on day four, and now you're getting this constant protein synthesis effect. So we need to balance training volume with frequency, I like twice per week. And what it ends up looking like is doing something like an upper body, lower body split. Hitting upper body twice per week, hitting lower body twice per week. Or you can do a classic full body workout three times per week. This is an old school method used by some huge guys. You know, I think uh, Bill Pearl is a guy that comes to mind off the top of my head who used some of these early five by five kind of things in full body workouts. Some of these old guys in the 70s bodybuilders use full body workouts. They're coming back into fashion now because we're realizing how effective this higher frequency approach is with the proper volume. So that's training. We need to progressively overload, lift heavier weights. And we're gonna talk about this down here um, in number six and number five, I should say, how we actually track our progress, hugely important. All right, so training aside, we're gonna move into principle number two, which is to maximize recovery. So as we talked about, exercise stimulates muscle protein synthesis. Recovery actually makes sure those muscles grow. So the first thing we're talking about recovery is sleep. Sleep is absolutely foundational to muscle building. If you're not sleeping well, your muscle gains are gonna stink. So at minimum, I would say, if your goal is to build muscle fast, you're getting seven and a half quality hours of sleep per night. If you're getting less than that, your gains are gonna be suboptimal. Ideally, you're sleeping up to nine hours per night. Um, and this is just because muscles grow outside the gym and we're giving our bodies a beating when we're working out and we wanna make sure we recover when we're not working out. Sleep is the foundation of our recovery. So you need to not just make sure that you're getting enough sleep, but the sleep you are getting is highly quality sleep. If you're finding that you're restless at night, you're waking up to pee, these things are impacting your recovery. You need good, interrupted, uninterrupted sleep. So a couple uh, quick tips is one, our bodies like to be cold during the nighttime. Our circadian rhythm, our body, our core temperature drops at night, so sleep in a cold room. Taper your fluids at night so you're not having to get up and pee all the time. Take some supplements like some melatonin um, or some ZMA, which is a, a zinc magnesium aspartate, which can help some guys with testosterone levels and also helps improve sleep quality. Magnesium is really the big thing there. But anything we can do to optimize our sleep is going to is gonna optimize our muscle gains as a result. So that's usually on the recovery, but also I wanna point out this word I wrote up here, cortisol. It's our body's main stress hormone. How many of us, you can raise your hand silently at home watching this, that has some stress in your life, whether you're in school and you have stress from school or your job or your family, cortisol and unchecked cortisol, this chronic stress, is going to impact your recovery from your workout. So doing anything you can do to really minimize the stress in your life, or at least get a better grip on it, is gonna help you build muscle. So we can take the same athlete on the same nutrition plan, same diet plan, and one guy's stressed out because he has a family issue and one guy's not, the guy who's not is gonna build more muscle period. So we got to keep cortisol under check and you know what those issues are in your life. Let's try to adjust those and, and do the best we can to keep the cortisol levels low. Next thing, principle number three is all about nutrition. When it comes to muscle building, uh, our two best friends uh, are really protein and carbs. We're going to talk about why fats are important for hormones and keeping your joints healthy, but I want to talk about the two main ones. A high protein diet works for building muscle and there is a you know, research backed ideal protein recommendations, which typically I like to go on the higher side. Um, and recommend 0.8 grams um, up to one gram per pound of body weight. And if you're on the metric, if you're not using our crappy US system and you're gonna use the metric system, here's some conversions on this video of what that actually means in kilograms. Um, but point being, we want a high protein diet and you wanna spread those protein uh, feedings out throughout um, at least three main meals, if not four. So you do not have to eat six small meals per day. That's not gonna give you better gains than if you only ate one, two, three meals. We learned that from some of this intermittent fasting research, but um, typically it's kind of hard to eat. Let's say you're, you're a 200 pound guy and you need to eat 200 grams of protein throughout a day, it's, it can be hard to eat that in one or two meals. So we can spread that out into four meals of 50 grams of protein to hit your target. So set that protein target. That's probably gonna be around 25 to 35% of your total calories. I recommend that you set your fat at roughly 25 
percent of your total calories. So for most guys, it's gonna be somewhere around 60 grams up to 120 grams of fat throughout the day. And again, spread that out throughout the day. Healthy fats are amazing for you. You wanna get things like the olive oils, the nuts and seeds, avocados, the kind of healthy fats that are in some of your protein foods. So you might be eating salmon or grass-fed beef or eggs, the whole eggs. You want that whole quality egg yolk. Really great for your testosterone levels. But point being, these healthy fats are gonna work their way into your meal, and then we're gonna fill the rest of your calories up with quality carbs. And I want you to time most of these carbohydrates um, around your training, pre-workout and post-workout. Best times for you to have your carbs, particularly post-workout when your body's very nutrient receptive. After training, your body likes to suck up those carbs. It's like, it gets very spongy. There's actually receptors on your muscle cells called GLUT4 receptors that after you train, go to the surface to invite more carbohydrate into the muscles to start the recovery process. So really cool, great time to eat lots of carbs after training, and carbs are a great tool for muscle building. They are as anabolic as protein, truly. So carbs stimulate insulin. Insulin is one of the biggest triggers for um, mTOR in protein synthesis, which is a fancy way of saying we're building muscle, we're synthesizing new proteins in the muscle. So make sure you get your carbs, don't skimp on those. And protein, carbs, fat, we talked a little about the macros, but calories matter too. You need to have a rough idea of how many calories you burn per day, and you need to eat more than that. It doesn't have to be traumatic. I'm not suggesting you eat 1,000 calories over that, this dirty bulking thing that's just gonna make you fat, but at least 250, if not 500 calories over that on the safe side um, so that you have a buffer and your body has enough energy to build new muscle. So we can follow this kind of high protein um, and carb and fat ratios, but if we're not eating enough calories, we, we could be dieting. We could be preserving muscle and losing fat, but that's not our goal, so we need enough calories. And we have a calorie calculator here that we'll link in the description that gives you an idea of basically your total energy expenditure, how many calories you burn in a day, and then you can type in your actual data. It's a spreadsheet. You can make a copy of it. It's on Google Sheets, um, and that'll give you an idea of what you need to be doing, and I know you'll find that very helpful. Now, um, that's, we'll, we'll pause there on the nutrition. There are some finer points that we can get into, but I think that's the big picture of what you need to know there. Um, number four, proper supplementation. There are supplements that work for muscle building. A lot of them are total crap. Anything that seems too good to be true, that's a natural supplement, is too good to be true. The stuff that actually works are one, creatine monohydrate. One of the best research-backed supplements helps your muscles work more efficiently by giving them energy. You'll be able to lift more weight, but research also shows that creatine directly stimulates muscle building and it helps improve brain function. New research coming out, creatine's awesome. Take five grams post-workout. You do not need to load this thing. You know, when I was growing up, we used to take like 25 grams of creatine and some guys still do these loading protocols to saturate the body very quickly. Does not uh, show any benefit over just taking five grams per day. Take it in your post-workout shake. There is some research that caffeine and creatine um, don't mix great together, and a lot of these pre-workouts are basically caffeine shots with some creatine. So take your creatine, post-workout, very affordable supplement, one of the best things out there. I also want you to get a quality protein powder. I don't care if it's a whey protein powder, I don't care if it's plant-based, Get something with high amounts of the branched chain amino acids. Leucine in particular is the amino acid that stimulates muscle protein synthesis. You want your protein powder to have L-leucine in it. It'll say it, it's a good thing. You want that post-workout, great time to have a shake. Um, and it's a great way to actually supplement your high protein target because you can have a shake post-exercise with 40 grams of protein. That's really a great way to hit that protein target without feeling like you're constantly eating you know, whatever throughout the day. And this is a good little side note too because I mentioned plant-based protein powders. You can hit all these macros with a completely vegetarian diet. The macros are the important thing. It's not like you have to be eating beef or chicken um, to hit these numbers. That makes it convenient, but you can be vegetarian and make massive muscle gains by following this principle. Um, and the other supplement I would really recommend would be fish oil. Really great for keeping inflammation down, keeping your joints healthy, um, and it's great for your brain and your heart health, and a quality multivitamin. Um, which is really overlooked because people don't think it's a muscle building supplement, but look, muscle building requires all these thousands and millions, I should say truly millions of these different enzymatic reactions. It requires all the proper vitamins and minerals that your body needs for baseline functioning. So let's get that taken care of. Get a quality full spectrum multi so you know all your minerals and vitamin needs, your micronutrients are taken care of. Then you can just focus on getting your macros in. Um, and the last thing I would also add is vitamin D. 
Great research shows that vitamin D levels, most of us are low. We have high levels of stress, we're not getting enough sunlight, um, and we're just burning through vitamin D and we're not getting enough. Vitamin D can raise testosterone levels in men, helps with immune function. One of the worst things you can do when you're trying to gain muscle is get sick. So it's a great, great all-around vitamin D. Uh, is a great product for muscle building, so check that out as well. Proper supplementation, let's move to progress tracking. Really great, because remember principle number one, progressive overload. So to build muscle, we need to consistently track our progress. That means when you're in the gym, um, do not make the mistake of trying to remember your weights. Write those damn things down in a log. Whether it's on your phone, you got like Evernote or a note application, and you're jotting down what your weights were last week, that's great. Or you can get an old school journal. Carry your journal, write down your weights by hand in between your sets, one of the best things you'll also do. What I would also recommend as you're progress tracking and actually writing down your weights, so you're making sure that you are doing progressive resistance, is not just writing down, oh, I did um, 60 um, pounds on the dumbbell bench press for 12 reps. I would also write down um, something called RPE next to that, which is rate of perceived exertion. How hard was that? So how hard was that 60 pounds for 12? How many reps did you have left in the tank? And what RPE does is on a one to 10 scale, 10 is like failure, one is like you had nine reps left in the tank. So let's say you had two reps left in the tank, you could have gotten like 14 or 15, you might give yourself an RPE eight. So I would write 60 times 12 on the flat dumbbell bench, RPE eight. So when I look back on that day, I can say, oh, you know, not only did I hit this particular number, but I had some left in the tank. And if you see that your RPEs start creeping up to the nine and 10, that means your body's not recovering enough in between these workouts. So it's a really great way to see, oh, I might need to up my sleep, up my nutrition, or take a day or two off of more rest and recovery. The RPE is a valuable thing. And you're only gonna ever know that if you actually wrote it down. If you leave it to memory, there's no way you're gonna remember how hard the RPE was from two weeks ago's back workout. Not a chance. So definitely track that, track that progress. In addition to actually logging your weights, it's good to take a picture once every month. Muscle building is not an overnight thing. Like with weight loss, you can see noticeable progress week by week, but take a monthly picture. You'll be able to see uh, just a front, back, and side picture. You'll be able to see the gains um, over time, and that's highly motivating, and it's nice to check back on your pictures. Principle number six, vary your routine. So our bodies do adapt to training. Just like any stimulus and any stress we give our bodies, it's gonna adapt. And over time, a workout that was effective becomes less effective. So it's a good idea to vary your routine. That's why if you've been on a bodybuilding split and you've been doing chest on Monday, back on Tuesday, legs on Wednesday, arms on Thursday kind of stuff, it could be a great time right now to switch to something dramatically different like full body training or an upper lower split, or at the very least changing up your exercises every four to eight weeks to give your body a new angle, a new stimulus. And it doesn't have to be dramatic. I mean, there's a difference between if you're doing flat dumbbell bench press as your main chest pressing motion, and you move to a low incline dumbbell bench press, that's enough of a variation to get the muscle building going. So it doesn't have to be these dramatic changes, but you do need to change up your exercises, and ideally your routine as well. Um, and this is a really just foundational principle. So you need a program that respects this, if you want help with this, we have a completely done for you program called Old School Muscle that uses this old school full body training three days per week, varies your routine and gives you all of this stuff that we've already talked about done to a T. We hand you the whole plan, the meal plan, the workouts, the supplement, et cetera. So this is not a pitch for that program. I'm just telling you there are other great programs like ours and you know plenty of other stuff you can definitely find online. Just if you want help in full body training, something you want to explore, we're the guys for that. We have an amazing program. There'll be links below. But varying your routine, hugely important. Next thing, number seven, is expectation setting. So again, I alluded to this a little bit before, muscle building is not an overnight thing. So you need to have an idea of how much muscle that you could build in any given time. And we have a full separate video that I shot that actually covers exact numbers of how much muscle as a natural guy you can expect to build in one month, two month, one year, and it's based on your training age. So here's a useful chart we'd like to throw up in this video. So it gives you an idea of some expectation setting for your muscle building. This is a patient man's game. If you're the kind of guy that just thinks you're gonna lift weights for four weeks and look like you know Ronnie Coleman or Arnold Schwarzenegger, not a chance, but if you're the kind of guy that's willing to grit this out, get the fundamentals down and stick to it to a year, your body can look dramatically different. Also understand this, even gaining five pounds of muscle is huge on your physique. Here's a five pound muscle difference. Dramatic physique, just five pounds difference. So five pounds is a lot of muscle. So if you're gaining that, let's say over the course of three, four, five months, huge progress, especially if your numbers are going up on your squat, your bench, and your deadlift, and your fat's going down. So 
I hope you found this valuable. I mean, big jam-packed video, right? A lot of information, but these are the foundations of muscle building for natural guys, um, and I hope you found this incredibly valuable. If you want help with this, me and my team, we do this 24-7 for thousands of guys all over the world. We have that old school muscle building program. Um, you can definitely check that out. There's links below where you can grab that program online. We'll send you our meal plan, our workouts, supplement plan, all straight to your email immediately today so you can get started and it respects all these principles. So that's a great option. Um, and also we have another free video if you're not ready to jump into a full blown program yet, the five best muscle building exercises, particularly for guys over 40, but even younger guys watching this video might like that because it shows you how to make those exercises like the bench, the pull-ups, deadlifts and squats friendlier on your knees, shoulders, and low backs. So you don't get injured, which is one of the worst things that can happen to your muscle building progress. So thank you for being here, my friend. I hope you learned something great. If you're watching on YouTube, give us a thumbs up if you found something useful in here and subscribe to our channel. We are a fast growing channel and we have hundreds of videos already on the channel and we love all our new subscribers. Um, and so holler at us, let us know new topics you wanna hear about. Um, we really appreciate your sub and, uh, and your vote of support and we can't wait to help you more in our programs like Old School Muscle. We have a weight loss program as well, FitFollow30X, you can check that out below. Thanks for being here, have an awesome day. Excited to hear about your progress and I'll talk to you very soon, my friend.